In this video, we're going to learn about the type underscore bool in C. So if you're using a more modern version of C, specifically C99 onwards, there's a type called underscore bool. And we can actually declare variables of this type. So we could have here underscore bool and then is sunny. And this is an actual bool variable. But you may have heard that C doesn't really have a Boolean type which is also kind of true. Let's explain this discrepancy. So first off, languages like C will have different standards written over the years. So there's C99, there's C11, and now there's the new C23. And in the older standards of C, like C89, there was no bool type. And just because a new language standard exists doesn't mean that everyone actually adopts it, especially right away. So there's many projects out there that still use the C89 standard. Now these older versions of the language actually explain why the underscore bool type exists and why it was initially called underscore bool instead of just bool. So across all versions of C, non-zero values are considered true and zero is considered false. So any integral type could be used as a bool type. So we could have, let's say int, and is raining. And if we assigned one to is raining, this would effectively be assigning true to is raining. And we could check that. We could have if is raining, then we'll output with printf, it's raining. Otherwise, we'll have an else case, and we'll have else printf, it's not raining. And if we save compile and run this, we're going to get that it's raining because one is true. Now, if we had zero here, zero is considered false. So if we save compile and run the program, now we'll get it's not raining. So any non-zero value is considered true. So we could have negative 10 here, and this is considered true. We could save compile and run the program, and again, we'll get it's raining. So from the perspective of making our code easier to read, it's not ideal to use values like one instead of true or zero instead of false. When we have zero, it's not clear whether we're using the value zero as an int or as the value false. Whereas if we have false, our intention is much more clear. And we have the same issue with using the type int when we use the type int to declare this variable, it's unclear whether this variable is supposed to store integers or whether we're going to be using this variable as a Boolean variable. So what people have done over the years is used typedef to make their own bool type. So we could have, let's say typedef and then int bool. And bool now becomes an alias for int. So here we could declare this variable of type bool, and this is okay. Really is raining is going to be an int type variable, but we can use the bool type to signal our intent for this variable. So we've made it clear to other readers of the code what type of data the variable is intended to store. We could also use define to define false and true using preprocessor macros. So we could have number define and false zero and number define true one. And here we've defined false as zero and true as one. So when compiling our C program, the preprocessor is going to go through and replace all occurrences of false with zero and all occurrences of true with one. So we could actually save compile and run our program and now it's going to work we'll get here, it's not raining. We could have true here. And if we save compile and run the program, again, it's going to work. We'll get here, it's raining. People also used enum as well. So we could have, let's say type def, and then enum, false and true. And then we'll have bool here. And so now we have a type bool that can be either false or true. And the way enum works is that false is going to be zero and true is going to be one. And if we had something else here, like both, 
this would be two. But we'll leave it at this. We'll have false and true, where false is going to be zero and true is going to be one. We'll comment this out as well. Then if we save, compile, and run a program, it's going to work as well. Again, we'll get it's raining. We could have false here. And if we save, compile, and run the program, now we'll get it's not raining. So there's other ways it could be done, but people used techniques like this to define and use their own Booleans for the sake of readability. They wanted to make their code easier to read. So when the C99 standard was made, they wanted to add bools to the language because obviously there was demand for them if people were coming up with their own solutions. At the same time, there was all this code out there that now used a custom bool type with the spelling B-O-O-L. So what they did instead was made a type called underscore capital B-O-O-L. And that spelling was very unlikely to be used by all the code that was already out there they also made a library called stdbool. And in the library, stdbool, there is a type bool. And bool in this library is really just an alias for underscore capital B O O L. So if we include this library here, stdbool.h, we can use the type bool and the values true and false. So the stdbool library gave people an optional way of using bool, true, and false. So if they were using one of these old techniques, because this was optional, nothing would break. That was essentially the idea. So right now, using stdbool.h, we can save, compile, and run the program, and it's going to work. We'll get it's not raining here, and if we change this to true, and save a program, and run it, we'll now get it's raining. But bool here is really just an alias for underscore capital B O O L. So we could have here underscore capital B O O L and we can use this bool type directly. If we save compile and run the program, we'll get it's raining. We could change this to false. And if we save compile and run the program, we'll get here it's not raining. Now the actual value that's stored by this variable is going to be either zero or one. So we could output here is underscore raining colon percent D backslash N and we'll output here is raining. And right now with false being assigned to the variable, if we save compile and run the program, we'll get here that is raining is zero. If we change this here to true, and then save compile and run the program, we'll get is raining is one. If we try to assign, let's say 10, and then we save compile and run the program, we'll actually get is raining is one. So this variable is going to store zero or one. We could try is raining plus plus. And again, if we save compile and run the program, is raining is still going to be one. If we declare an int variable x and assign the value five to x and then declare a pointer to an int called ptr and we assign to it the memory address of x, then here, if we assign ptr to is raining, is raining is still going to be one. So we'll comment this out. And then if we save compile and run the program, we'll get is raining is one. If the pointer is null, then is raining is going to be zero. So if we save compile and run the program, we'll now get is raining is zero. So we don't really need to use this underscore capital B O O L type. Assuming that we're not using some old custom bool type like this, we could just include STD bool and then use lowercase B O O L like this. And this here would likely be considered cleaner. Now in C23, which is the newest version of the language, bool, true, and false are all keywords. They're all built right into the language. So we don't need to include stdbool.h. So we could say that a proper bool type has been slowly phased in to the language. So this is the underscore capital B OOL type in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers including courses to help you develop C programming projects.